All right, oversized prime. This time I brought my sidekick with me. So what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna do the same thing. Primal? What's the matter, Prime? You've gotta be kidding me. Uh, sir, you want Nightbird to join in? No, we can take care of them ourselves. Ah! Sup guys, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Yolo Park Optimus Primal Model Kit from Rise of the Beasts. Now, in my recent review, which was the Yolo Park Optimus Prime, I sure had a lot of fun with this guy, so I decided to get this guy along with Bumblebee, which stay tuned for that review, but for now we're going to focus on this guy. If you didn't know, Yolo Park is in partnership with Hasbro to make these model kits, which I think is pretty cool. I honestly think that we definitely needed these, as they would have gone along well with the marketing for Rise of the Beasts. Now, before we get to the unboxing, uh, let's take a look at the packaging. I think this is really good. Now, when I received my box in the mail, it was a little busted in some areas, so yeah, there's that. Oh, and the box art right here is pretty much the same thing that we've seen for Optimus, but except it's with Optimus Primal. Here's the sides, that's a pretty cool CGI rendition. And here's the other side, but this time it's Optimus Primal in his gorilla mode. I think that's pretty cool. And if we turn to the back, you'll see what you get inside the box, and I think that looks really cool. Can't wait to open this up. Also, this time, he comes with a weapon, unlike Optimus, and Bumblebee doesn't come with a weapon either, but I hear Cheater and Rhinox will come with Optimus and Bumblebee's weapons. Not sure how that's going to play out. And if we look at the instructions over here, it appears as if the build is less complex, unlike Optimus' build. Eh, it was fine. Also, here's other places where you can follow Yolo Park on social media, and to conclude, here's the, uh, uh, logo. Also, here's all this. And in case you didn't know, there's the Rise of the Beast logo, and then there's also another Rise of the Beast logo on the bottom. Anyways, without further ado, let's get on with the unboxing! Okay, so yeah, just like Optimus Prime, all the pieces are wrapped in this uh, clear plastic. I thought we were not doing clear plastic, but okay. I guess these people know what they're doing. Also, it looks as if this guy's going to be a little bigger than Optimus. I don't know, we'll see. Alright. Let's throw that away. And yeah, just like that, it exploded with zero fail, just like Optimus Prime. Anyways, cue the build. Uh, I didn't look at the instructions. Ah, whatever. Cue the build. Snapping there. Snapping. 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 <sighs> okay, this is getting exhausting. I'm just gonna say snap every time I plug something in. Snap. 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 And lastly, snap. Mm, there we go. Get in there. There we go. Okay. Power is definitely primal with this guy, because he looks really cool. So, first off, painting and sculpting on this figure, really good. The amount of exquisite mechanical detail on this guy leaves this figure immaculate. Oh, and that head. That head sculpt is really cool, too. And, is it just me, or does his face sculpt kind of resemble that of uh, the Night Optimus? I mean, at least the way the, the head is, kind of. And I do like the Maximal logo, right smack in the chest. Oh, and the legs are pretty accurate to what he looks like in the film, too. And, of course, they even did a good job with the details on the back. This looks, this looks pretty good. And I do like how they sculpted the fur pieces. I think that's pretty neat. You know, honestly, it's a shame we didn't really get to see much of Optimus Primal's robot mode. But then again, all the way back in Age of Extinction, that's kind of how it was with the Dinobots. We didn't really get that much screen time with the Dinobots. At least for, um, robot mode. Also, I do like how you could see some of the pieces from the endoskeleton behind all the armor. Oh, and for accessories, surprisingly, he comes with quite a lot. Starting off, his two swords. And yeah, these are really big. I like it. On the bottom of the swords, there's two, there's a lock right here, and then there's a tab right here, in case you just snap it in, and yeah, it forms this big thing right here, I think it's pretty cool. And two of the five hands that come with different poses, uh, there are two of them right here where you can hold the swords just perfectly. Or if you want, you can have them holding the swords like this. And I don't think there's any place where you can put them in the back. Also, I think it would have been really cool if he came with chains so we could recreate that part where he swings the swords. 
at least for the teaser trailer. It was scrapped out in the film. Now for the hands, he comes with these two hands, the ones where you could hold his swords, like we mentioned before. And of course there's another gripped hand, except it's closed all the way in. And then there's one where it's completely open. Also, he comes with the We Take the Battle to Them hands, not sure why. And if that wasn't enough, he comes with a swappable face, which is something they forgot to add with Optimus, and I think they they forgot to add it with Bumblebee. Eh, whatever. Budget happened, I guess. I think you're supposed to open something off of here. What did I chip off? Uh-oh. Something's supposed to f snap off. Uh, no, that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, uh, I tried to snap it off off camera, but I'm having trouble with it. So at the moment, I cannot remove that. But you got to remove the forehead, take the mask off, swap it out with this thing, and then put the forehead back, I think. I mean, that's what it says in the instructions. And um, here's a better look. Also, in terms of quality, there's some parts where the figure is a little loose, especially around the waist. I don't know why, but the hands pop off way too easily. Same thing with the upper and the lower arm guard. Also, some of the ball joints are a little too tight, like this can barely move. Same thing with this guy's head. And sometimes when you try to stand primal, uh, he starts crouching down because of the slightly loose joints on his legs. So, uh, yeah, that's something worth noting. Anyways, let's just get down a size comparison. Starting off, here he is next to the Yellow Park Optimus, which I had a feeling Optimus was going to be a little bit bigger. RC, Freezer, can't wait for Novocaine, Pablo, Nightbird, Mainline Cheater, Mainline Rhinox, Mainline Optimus Primal, Mainline Optimus Prime, Studio Series Bumblebee, Studio Series Air Razor, Studio Series Cheater, Studio Series Battle Trap, someone give me a real fight! And lastly, Studio Series Scourge. And they're kind of a little similar, but this guy's just like a slightly taller, at least from head to toe. So yeah, that's it for size comparison. That's just Prime. Anyways, let's get down to articulation. The head is on a double ball joint, which allows for an up and a down, and a swivel as well. Oh, and this is supposed to be on a ball joint, but it barely moves. It can only move up and down as far as I'm concerned. Butterfly joint at the shoulder. Shoulder pad moves upward, which allows the shoulder to move upward as well. Oh, and there's another shoulder joint that can move the shoulder up and down. Full rotation at the arm, bicep swivel, double bend at the elbow, and it almost looks as if there's some sort of mech alive, kind of? And this annoying piece that tends to snap off is also on a ball joint, and it's on a other joint, which it's more like a you can snap it off kind of joint. And for the wrist, it's on a ball joint, which allows the foot to move up and, I mean, up and down, up and down, and allows the wrist to swivel. Ball joint at the waist, which allows a side to side, an up and a down, and of course a swivel. And there's also like a hip swivel, I think? I think it's the hip. Legs can spread, better than it did with Optimus. Leg can move all the way up that far, can move all the way back. Back that far. Whoa, I'm glad I caught this, but you push this down, it allows the leg to move further upward. There we go. Yeah, I've seen this sort of forward hinge joint for the leg movement more often in uh, Transformers toys, especially with SS102 Optimus. Thigh rotation, knee pad moves up and down, double bend at the knee, foot can move up and down, foot can also do a pivot, and of course a swivel. Oh, and the toes happen to move up as well, especially the side toes right here. I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it for articulation. And it allows for great posability as well. Like this one, which kind of looks like he's holding that one mace from uh, Battle Trap. Honestly, I think it's much more simpler if you have him standing in this kind of pose, kind of. Or you could have him in this type of pose where he's warning a Terracon not to go after him or else he's going to get sliced. Oh, and you can also have him like this, or this. Overall, I think he's a solid good figure. Definitely recommend picking him up, but is he better than Optimus Prime? Definitely not, at least for me. I do like that he comes with accessories though. That's something lacking with Optimus and Bumblebee, but don't worry, though those accessories will be coming with Cheater and Rhinox. Now the last review I gotta do is with Bumblebee. Some people say Bumblebee's a little better. I don't know about that. But we'll see. Can't wait to check them out in the next review. Anyways, if you like what you saw here, be sure to slam that like button. 
share this with your friends, turn on post notification, that's if it works for you. But most importantly, be sure to hit that big red button. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. See ya!